Hi everybody, welcome back to Sand Injunction. Today I've got something very different, very special. So tune in now, let's just see what's been going on. Hi everybody and welcome back to Sand Injunction. This is a, a very, very special uh, video from me personally and from Sand Injunction. It's all about my very first ever full diorama build, start to finish, uh, that is independent of Sand Injunction and indeed No Name Junction before that. And I just wanted to say or introduce it to you. It took many, many hours of building and it took many, many more hours to edit the video into some form of cohesion that you could enjoy and get something from that was a little bit under an hour. So sit back, enjoy it. Any comments you've got, please um, um, put them at the end in the comment section. You know the normal way of doing things. And if you want to share this with other people, fantastic, that would help me. And if you want to subscribe to my channel and help me boost my channel, then please, it costs you nothing, but it would be great, you'll be welcome on board and that'll be a fantastic thing to do. I do plan on doing many more of these over the uh, coming future. I don't know how they will be received, but if you enjoy it and the reception is good, then I'm going to get involved with doing some more because I really do enjoy it. So sit back, as I said, and enjoy this video. Catch you all on the next one. Bye-bye for now. Right, so here we go with the build. Now the first things first is I used a little piece of two inch XPS. This is the denser form of polystyrene. Doesn't fragment like the more commercial uh, types do. And I cut an A3 down to approximately A4. And what I also then did is I found some normal polystyrene, which was, I think it was packaging from a builder's thing that a friend of mine gave me large lumps and I used my hot wire cutter uh, which I'll leave the description for below um, I used that to cut it down into the lumps that I really needed and uh, I'm now sort of using a straight edge at the back to give me a thinner uh, wall so I can start building this diorama now this is basically going to be a hill stream uh, that I it's based on a, a scene from Scotland, but I've added trees, so it's not quite the same. I used the waterfall section uh, based on a visit to Scotland many, many, many years ago. So I felt that that would make it great. It also actually I've painted the waterfall, and it also uh, acts as the front cover to one of my books on painting. So. Uh, it's been well used this scene so and I love it I think it's a great little scene so I thought it would be absolutely perfect to debut my diorama builds as it were uh, moving forward for Sand Injunction and Paul Apps so yeah I hope you enjoy this anyway but I just adding the forms and it's all off cuts Allowing it to glue up and dry, I used uh, the uh, Yoohoo pore glue, which is perfect for polystyrene. Now I'm starting to mark out all the sort of shapes that I would like to use um, in the cutting process. Now what I've got to say is that with all cutting of uh, polystyrene, wear a mask because it does give off very toxic fumes as the plastic is melted. It's not a good thing. This particular cutter is actually a cheap one I bought, a battery one I bought, but it soon gave up the ghost and did not work at all. But instead of throwing it away, I actually modified it to be a mains feed. Very simple job to do, take it apart, uh, put in a couple of wires, a couple of extra holes, and I have myself a very good functioning um, sort of mains product. This is actually a small... Um, cutter from the same company and I say I put the details below but it's a free form cutter so I'm using a combination of the two the D shape which is the cheap one and uh, the other one which I bought in specifically for odd shapes what I'm also now doing is using sculptor mold and I'm mixing that down into usable amounts I don't want to go too much at once because it starts getting too stiff this you need to put in um, as much water as you feel needs to move it. And it doesn't want to be sloppy because it just takes an, 
forever to, to dry out. Just get it enough so that you can move it and, and ply it and do what you want to do with it. So do it in batches. That's not a problem at all. And this stuff does stay, you know, despite everyone saying it's only got a working time, it does actually work for quite a while. And you can keep uh, adding and wetting it up on the surface just to smooth it down later on should you wish to do so. But I'm just going in and applying a liberal coating over the whole of my uh, form and allowing that to dry up later on, of course, before we move on to the next step. And everything I'm doing so far is fairly standard. I'm employing a few uh, rock molds that I made I, used, I bought some um, second-hand ones off of eBay. They were okay. I think they're a little bit perished, if I'm honest with you, because you can see here that the um, rubber is sort of being left on the surface. They should be lovely and white like the one below, but in fact they were a little bit uh, blackened in places. But break them up, choose one that works for you, and add that into the sculptor mold, and then carry on building. And as you can see, the whole process is just building, building, and building all these uh, layers. Now, this is going to take a few days to dry once it's done, but you've got quite a bit of time to form the waterfall and the suggestive um, sort of back water, as it were. So, suggesting the lake or whatever river feed to the waterfall before it starts crushing down the rock faces. And you can, you know, you can add to it. You can put more rocks in here. I chose not to. I only put in a few at the bottom just to create an additional channel for the water to flow through. And that's all I really wanted to do. But now it's there and I've smoothed it off. I put in some of my wife's gardening grit uh, just to give a little bit of texture to the water, uh, the river bottom. And then I went out and I found some uh, little stones and pebbles in the driveway on the road. Just picked a few up. Different sizes, different shapes. They're very smooth. And that's what you'd find uh, predominantly in a river where you know water is flowing over them all the time. They would smooth off. And they are ideal for that purpose. Now I'm using some very cheap £3.50 uh, graduate acrylics. I'm using burnt umber, a grey and raw umber. And together they sort of create a very simple and initial wash of darks over the whole of the um, model. Everything is getting plastered in this. Use quite a long bristle brush in certain ways if you can. because And quite fluidic water and paint mix. Because you do want to get into all those areas of white. I found that there are a lot of little uh, crevices and dips there and you can see here there's little white spaces that the brushes mix missed and I could have gone over it a second time in fact during the course of the build at different times I actually did do that now I am going to apply some tile grout and sand through a lady's stocking um, I didn't steal my wife's she doesn't wear them I actually went to the store and bought a pack and uh, cheapest chips but put them over a jar and you've got your own dispenser for this fine material. I would suggest, though, um, make sure that you do it in a place that's not going to mess up. Certainly not in your train room, which is what I was doing at the time. But um, a little water PVA mix on the top just to allow it to adhere from the underside. But I will uh, go in once this is done and spray it down. Take the excess off, but spray it all the way down with some IPA uh, alcohol, of course, I I, pro oh, I can't say it. IPA, there you go. And, and I just wetted that down and then I went over with some scenic glues just to seal it off. It looks terrible right now, uh, but it will not stay that way. I then went into uh, the river basin uh, with black and umber. So a very dark, but a very warm uh, tone of black. Uh, to suggest the water at the bottom. I tried to miss out the stone, but uh, I, I didn't worry too much about that. Now I'm using all these other different colors that you can see in the little palette below. Predominantly one that is like a bone color, um, like a pale cream, a grungy cream, and grays. 
just to give me to start painting some of the faces of the rocks before they go up into the earth and it's merely a suggestion because you know you're not going you can play around this as long as you want but try the more refinements you want to do then use a dry brush technique you know put some on take it off and just skim over the surfaces and that's really what i started doing just to try and suggest the form and the shapes of the rocky stony watery bottom coming in with a bit more detail now on some of the rocks on the side and i want to blend it in i don't want big changes so i'm being very very subtle over the amount now you see a piece of paper in my hand i'm not just putting neat paint on i'm rubbing it off so i'm doing quite a bit of dry brushing and but it's not as though i'm putting it onto wet surfaces there are lots of hours in this build and um, what you're seeing is takes between dried stages so you know i let a paint i put some on i let it dry before i proceed to the next uh part so as i say these um footage pieces that you're seeing took many many hours of filming over sometimes several days and allowing the paint to dry between thoroughly before i went on with the next one now i found some uh, fibrous roots i let them dry a little bit but not much i didn't want them to become brittle i wanted to let them dry as and when uh they were ready and i fixed them they were sort of roots that would protrude through the ground from trees and old bushes that may have lost their life and what have you just they're there now the best ones i found were the roots of mint plants spearmint peppermint something of that nature unfortunately my wife is not too happy about me starting to pull a few up to obtain root stock <laughs> but there again i did do it under the opposite on under the uh excuse that i was helping her doing some gardening and helping her splitting up the roots uh so that she could make more plants from them <laughs> well there you go that was my excuse but it worked and you can see here i super glued them into place and they will get some paint and treatment but at the moment they're just sitting there trying to make them look as natural as i can now i'm going to use modge podge mat and i'm going to start putting on some static grass and for that i'm using uh the proprietary brands from um i think it's uh woodland scenics that i'm using i use a lot of their products they are extremely good products but i intersperse their products with ones that i've made myself so you'll see throughout my bills not just this one but other ones that I'm using both Woodland Scenics products. I'm also using my own. And also, if you notice, you can see where some of the um, dry, that sort of um, stuff that I powdered on the, the um, I forget what it is now. I'll have to look it up and put it in the details below. But I think it was a tile grout mix. And I put that on and it's starting to dry out. So it's starting to lighten up. And that works very, very well. I put an initial... Uh, two millimeter uh, standard grass on to begin with and covered the whole thing up and um, it's amazing how this just works i love putting static grass on because it just turns something mundane into something very very special but very very quickly i wasn't um trying to cover every little aspect I will tap all this off, of course, and all the stuff that I don't want there will be knocked off and hoovered up into a, a piece of stocking through the end of a hoover and then reuse later on. I used a very soft fan brush just to bring all of those uh, pieces of grass upright. Grass grows upright, doesn't stick out from the side. It grows upright and uh, you need to do that. I added a bit more scenic glue uh, into certain places to thicken up the grass in certain areas. And the whole of this process gets built now because it's not just about one application. It's lots of small applications. And I wanted to put in now some uh, winter grass, some longer grass, some four millimeter grass. So I added a little bit more in in places tapped a little bit of neat glue in one or two lumps that suggest that there is a bit of coarser grass uh, certainly on the edges near the lead edge where the um, 
goes down the cliff face as it were um, people don't trample it there they don't walk on it and animals are less likely to graze on it so i was putting in some heavier and slightly different i think i used a winter mix just to give a difference and just show a different density in the thicknesses of the grass because i'm always a little bit worried about going too heavy i think four millimeter uh, grass equates to um, you know, a foot long grass in real in the real world as it were and I'm always dubious that how much grass if you use six mil or longer how much grass really does grow uh, to a sort of 18 inches uh, in height and still looks fairly green so I don't think very often you see that so I'm always a bit dubious about that um, again, I am literally just raising the uh, outer edges and those on the uh, angles to an upright position. Now I'm using some um, uh, foam core, which is uh, foam within a plastic membrane or paper plastic membrane. And I'm just marking out the size to give the whole of the model a really nice finish. So I've marked out and traced around roughly the design and shapes of the hills and I'm just cutting them out with a sharp knife and then they will be glued into place and taped down and I will then fill in any gaps with a bit more uh, material and then paint that up and blend that all in so that you really shouldn't see the sides. And it was fairly successful. I'm not sure. It does compress quite easily. I would also be tempted next time to maybe think about doing some MDF board and cutting that out. It's not hard to cut and I think would give a much better finish. Certainly easier to glue. Uh, this was a bit of a nightmare. I also used the wrong tape. This is low tack tape and it really doesn't hold too well so there you go just watch that now i've uh, come to my new studio location i'm using some woodland scenics fine turf and a spoon just to sprinkle one or two bits into areas of the grass where it may be looking a little bit uh, thin it just adds an an extra element and i'm just using the brush to knock it down into the uh, grass fibers before I proceed and I did both this and I did the burned grass too just to give a variation uh, into the um, tones that you see overall looking it's not all of it is not necessary this is um, ground leaves these are leaves that I've picked up uh, in the garden and on near to my gallery and I've dried them out in the oven and I've pulverize them in a coffee grinder and i got and then i sieve them and these those are the finest ones and i keep another lot which are not so fine now i'm using some uh sort of clump and foliage from uh, woodland scenics i'm using the lighter color green and i'll use the darker color green and i'm just placing in sort of bits of low line scrub that will help build up the whole scene overall and make it look quite authentic i hope that's the idea of this whole build of course is to make something that does look authentic and um you know that is um yeah well it's best of my knowledge or best of my skills anyway i also add in uh, some of my own flock material my own foam uh, which I've created which is uh, I got several of them and try to mimic some of the colors that the woodland scenics offer but of course you can get so much out of a piece of car sponge or uh, other things and I will do videos on how I complete and make some of these things later on so that will hopefully help some of you save a few pennies and if you don't wish to this is my version this is a darker mix that I put in and created it works very very well i've also got the same colors and lighter colors in a much finer where i've pulverized the dry stuff in a coffee grinder again and uh, made a much finer one now i want to spray this lot down so i don't want this all over my river scene so i'm gonna literally put some paper down and protect it while i use some ipa over the whole thing 
to begin with just to wet it out so it will it's actually ipa and water mix so it, it goes a bit further because we all know that ipa right now is like gold dust and um yeah so if you put it in with water spray it over the top and that seals all that fine turf in and then using a dropper with 50 50 um water uh pva and a little dish soap it will then allow you to drop that over the um, clump material and that will set up and dry off hard and it's not going to start falling away from you but it will dry clear of course and so at the end of this you've got a wonderful scene set up you can see some of those little bits of burn tinges from the dried leaves in there and i think that works well now there's also a lot of runoff from spraying this so i want to clean some of that off I'm putting a little bit more of the coarse leaf. This is leaf that did not go through the sieve too much, but it acts as like the dead leaves that you see on the edges of ditches or on rivers where trees have fallen and not trees have fallen, but you know, leaves have fallen from the last winter. They're still collected there. I put them in, they add another dynamic to the watery scene. I also put a few in the bottom of the river. Now, obviously leaves and stuff do fall down through the river they do sink to the bottom and they do congregate in the troughs in the bottom of the river so i wanted to put a few of those in so that once the water's put in you can actually then see those now this is me getting ready for putting the water in place i'm sealing off the edges and making a dam and I've got to be very careful because the last thing you want to do with this is to put the, the uh, water in and let it run through. So now I'm using Mod Podge, the glue, just to literally seal off the joints on the tape. Not just the bottom of the tape where it joins the model, but also where you've got tapes that are layered because obviously it can seep through there too. And you've got to protect that. The last thing you want to do is have your water... Um, sort of sifting out i did that on one of my earlier models uh a long time ago and it just went and just lost it it looked like the tide went out now i'm using this um cfs um water resin and it's not cheap but it's probably one of the most economical ways of doing it if you're going to use it fairly fast they're a lovely company to deal with and um yeah and the you know they are helpful as well so anything you need to know they will be there to tell you but you use equal portions of this i use a digital um weighing scale with a plastic cup just to measure out two parts on each that i want and you can see one is just slightly yellower than the other and now i'm going to mix them together using a spatula and obviously protecting my hands this is um stuff that is a resin and it's not good for your skin so you do need to protect yourself uh, safety is always paramount in a, any model making where you're using from cutters and knives all the way through to obnoxious materials which this can be i added a little bit of uh, burned umber uh, ink in there just to give the um look of the water you don't really want it purely clear just to tint it sometimes you put a bit of blue in sometimes a bit of green for this i just added some uh what they call sepia which is a really nice and it's just an acrylic ink now i'm getting ready for the pour and i start at the top and i pour down through the back of the river where it's feeding the waterfall and all the way down the face of the waterfall itself before I come into the well or the water as the water will run away. Now the thing I had a problem with, which you'll see further on, is that I the um, I needed to the weight sorry the weight of the uh, water resin pushed forward on my tape at the front there you can already see it pushing forward i didn't notice it and uh, to be honest with you, i didn't see it at the time but next time i do something like this i will take great steps to make sure that the uh, tape at the front is supported so that i end up with a really nice flush finish and i think in doing that it would have also given me a slightly greater depth of water what I'm doing now is using a, 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 broke, a flush lolly stick. I cut the end off because I don't want the taper on it. I want the flat edge. 
and to that end I can sort of go around and lose the um, edge to this it creates like a funny edge that looks as though it's tapering up the side so you knock that and get rid of that now I'm using a uh, kitchen cooks heater just to take out the air bubbles and almost set fire to the thing <laughs> but just to take the air bubbles out don't overdo it you don't want to burn the surface or anything horrible like that but it just takes the bubble out now this is the part where I really discovered the issue that I had and I thought I could get away with it for a while but uh, as you'll see later on I chose that it needed extra work so I'm cutting away the edge now when this sets up like the edge sets up around surfaces of the rock which you saw me knocking away with the spatula now I'm cutting this edge off of the edge of the resin and that gives a much nicer edge to the water as such so there you go now I wanted to put on Mod Podge gloss now Mod Podge gloss is fantastic because you can now create ripple and the water has quite an exciting surface obviously as it's under pressure coming away from the uh, waterfall itself so it's going to be moving rapidly and it will be tucking into little eddies and to that you put some on and then you use a plastic straw just to blow into the um, wet material and create these wonderful little eddies and then allow it to dry up don't put too much on at a time you can put it on in little stages like this and then come back to it and add some more that's not a big deal just paint some more on and play around with it for as long as you wish to and just create the eddies now i'm showing you this at this point but there is a little story that i will tell you further on in this uh, video that uh, you will seem to see me do something like this over again and there's a good reason for that but I did it on here and it I used this footage because although things changed this was the most definite um, footage to show you in terms of showing you how it all worked so yes so I've set it all up anyway and I've made all these wonderful little shapes and eddies in the water they will dry up clear because I'm using Mos Modge Podge clear or um, gloss and it will give you a lovely surface to your resin and once this is dried up what I'm now doing is I'm using some clear builders corking the sort of stuff you use in a bathroom and I'm just putting several lines of it out on a piece of plastic again in hindsight I found out that this was uh, not the best way to do things yes use the cork that worked fine it did exactly what I wanted it to do but actually depositing it on this plastic was a nightmare getting it off so I would suggest next time certainly for me I will be doing it on grease proof paper or glassine paper something of that uh, uh, sort of surface that this stuff will not adhere to I didn't really think that one through to be honest with you but then I just took a simple uh, cocktail stick type thing bamboo skewer and just messed up dragged it through the surface of this stuff just completely wrecked the surface of what I just put out there and spread it in places broke it off in other places trying to make something that when it's pulled away will look like a waterfall and the way that water rushes down so you can see it's completely mucked up and all very very deliberate but as I say the problem I had was getting enough there's plenty there as you can see but I had enough trouble trying to get all of mine off sufficiently I did it in the end it wasn't a problem it's been dried off now I've got a knife under and I'm literally putting little bits off that actually came away would have been a lot easier had I had it on a different surface but I'm now putting in place I'm using some more of the same but wet product just to act as a glue and it will work very well against that resin it will adhere in the same way as it adhered to the plastic uh, tray that I use but I'm just picking bits up using it putting it a bit down and anchoring in this product 
these rubberizy or whatever they are sub uh medium that's dried off and it worked it did work very very well i enjoyed the process um you know i put a bit on took a bit off played around with it and um yeah i sort of tried to think in my head of the um picture that i was working from yeah, and the photo that i was working from to try and recreate this lovely little waterfall actually the waterfall in scotland was right next to a road and if you did a 380 degree turn you'd have seen a great big ugly metal culvert that took the, the waters away down the side of the mountain but looking upstream it was this and it was a beautiful uh, set up but as i say i sort of translocated it and added trees to it which were not growing at the time at this location but i think you'll see that uh, the waterfall is forming nicely and you can make as much of it or as little of it as you want you can actually layer some of this stuff on top of the uh, other pieces and you can see that not only am i using the uh, dried material i'm actually sculpting uh, extra wet stuff in that will just help um, fix it to the side of the model but also uh, enhance the trickles and the runs and the rush of water coming down that face and I it, you know every aspect of this sort of modeling is just so much fun because you're trying every aspect you can and with the knowledge the wealth of knowledge that you have uh, to create all these different effects and mimic life mimic nature uh, with anything from dry tea leaves which you'll see me use all the way through to some stuff that you normally caught bits and pieces to in your bathroom um, so yeah and I'm just putting in a little bit of stuff that's bubbling up at the bottom of the falls under pressure so a little bit of thick material as it comes off and sits on top of the um uh the modge podge gloss that i put in earlier and that's all dry you can see the ripple in the surface there right there you can see all that ripple and you can see what effect that that had on top and that will come pay dividends when we come to put on a bit of uh, paint and stuff to affect white water as it rushes away but I think the waterfall is pretty much done. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to enhance that. And I'm going to use uh, some um, sort of thick white uh, acrylic uh, gesso just to give the areas where the water is foaming as it's hit. It's under pressure, creates a bit of white water. And as that breaks away as you see in in waves at the sea it breaks away and dissipates the further away from the falls that it goes and i'm picking up the brush is fairly dry brush i'm not going to put too much material on because it just becomes too much so you sort of take some pick some up brush some off and you find some of the ridges that you used in that modge podge gloss and with the um, straw just to create those lovely eddies and ripples in the water surface and to that end you're just using those to define some of the ways that this is running away i'm using some of it up into the waterfall itself just touches here and there nothing serious nothing too much because any of this can any one of these processes can overdo it and you don't want to overdo it you just want it to look natural and uh, normal and so yeah i think that the effect is building and we are now sort of if i was painting a picture i would be calling this my i's and t's this is where i'm starting to refine shapes and information i've done the grunt i've done all the build and the sculpting and the layering and the grasses etc now i'm coming into really important stuff the water and mimicking uh the forms that you would see and the splattering and as i say the diffusion of water as it pushes away under pressure from the falls themselves i think this is quite successful and you know so not pipe in my own quarters were but i really was quite impressed with the way that this was looking and don't forget this is my first ever proper diorama build for you guys i i want to do a lot lot more of it i so enjoy this process of uh creating these things 
Uh, I've done a few little bits and pieces for other projects that I had in my last layout and on here, but I've learned and I keep learning all the time. And I just want to do so much more of this. And it's a fascinating art. I mean, to me, it's I enjoy this as much as I do my railway themselves. But the railways add a good reason to do it. So, you know, I can do that on Sanding Junction. But then I'm practicing my craft, as it were, in creating all these wonderful exhibit pieces that you can see and enjoy and hopefully learn something from. I'm working back up the top of the stream to the head of the stream and I'm using the same techniques because obviously the water will be rushing in through the back there to create the falls. Now I'm using some matte black to finish off these edges. And as you can see over the process, the outer walls in that um, foam core have become a little uh, bit attacked and, and become a problem and it also took two coats of this to give that a nice firm finish so i would definitely be using some mdf cut and glued to shape and it's easy to cut mdf uh, with a sharp knife if you're careful and you'll get a firmer finish now then what i'm going to talk about here you can see that i have got a new and fresh lot of the uh, white stuff and the uh, bits and pieces on here and the reason you're seeing this again is i used a different method i used white and gloss medium that wasn't the problem what the problem was was i decided that i needed to polish the front back it had a horrible bow in it and i've got to say that i saw a great video from luke of luke's aps great channel and a great guy for doing lots of modeling, uh, mainly gaming and that sort of stuff. But he's a, he's got some great ideas. But he showed the process of using tons of uh, paper, you know, emery type paper, cloth paper, where you go right the way back from coarse all the way to the very, very finest to give that final polish and then put some gloss over the end product to give a shine. I needed to do that, but what happened was it lifted all that uh, Mod Podge gloss off the first time round, so I had to start that process again. That's why it looks a little bit awkward in terms of the filming, but I, f I left the first one in there because I felt that it was a lot more sub uh, descriptive for you. Now I'm using some old tree and bush stock that I've made. These are actually made out of sisal, and again, I will show you that process in a future video. But I wanted to tart them up. I wanted to use a little bit of my dark green fine flock over the top as clump and then put some knock leaves and bits and pieces on, sprayed the surface with a uh, glue or a glue sealer, and then just come in with one or two bits and pieces just to freshen up this um, bushes. And I wanted to make them to look a little bit like um, gorse bushes. I love, we got a lot of those around in Kent, a lot of gorse, and I love that look. So I put much of it on here and just tapped off the excesses, put some grass on, tapped it off, sealed it off. Now I want to start playing around and we're coming into the final part of this build because everything is done. I've rebuilt the water uh, in terms of coming away with that polished front, painted the whole thing up. Now I'm looking for my trees. These are trees that I've recently made for this project. There is enough footage that I took that I can actually do a video of how I built these, but they're built on natural armature. They're built on bits of twig and stuff that I found out on my travels from the garden, bits of dead stuff. I've dried it and I've used the best shapes to create these nice looking natural trees. And they're also sea foam. So all my trees of this nature are built with sea foam. And then you just paint them up, spray them and add the various flocks. I'm adding in these trees and I'm making, making the holes for them. I've got little spikes on them because I glue in little track bins just to give them a firm pointy start to hold them there. But you can see I'm not sure where I want these trees. I'm looking, I'm changing the uh, position of them. I felt that the first one was just a little bit 
little me, middle me and big me and I wanted to change it. So now I've changed the position and I've got a much nicer arrangement of trees on the top there and suggesting that you could go off and the stream will go off through trees, woods or whatever. And it's it's like a cameo uh, piece of uh, landscape, of course. Now I'm putting in these gorse bushes and I'm gluing them around, but I'm also putting extra glue over the top. And that is that I want to sprinkle some of the uh, Woodland Scenic's yellow flower. And that will act as the suggested um, sort of gorse uh, flowers that you commonly see over them and they're really pretty I mean deadly as hell when it comes to getting pricked by them but they're beautiful I'm adding in little bits of ground cover little bits of bushes and stuff this one is one that's going down the bank and across the river and I think that worked very very well it's a nice little touch I like that and um, I was quite impressed but again I'm putting some more yellow flowers on change of position once more of the trees and gluing them in but all the time i'm thinking of you know adding bits here adding bits there and nothing's sort of set uh in nature uh you can you know almost anything goes within reason but uh you know it's it's um yeah well i'm, I'm sort of rambling a little bit but i you can see i'm just building little bits of information some of that was just dry sea foam what I'm putting in now is a little bit of dirt and that around the edges of some of the trees and bushes. All this is are spent tea bags and I dry them out and dry them in the oven and put them through a sieve and I get these lovely dried pieces of dark dirt. Cost me nothing. What you see me now is tearing off a red bush tea bag. And I didn't even use that. I just used it neat, straight out of the package. And that added a little bit of extra leaf litter, a bit of warm, a bit different to the dried leaves I had earlier because there are some variations of tone and color in there. But I think it added something to it. Now I'm using IPA and I'm spraying this down probably for the last time and setting everything off and making sure that uh, nothing is going to move in this model moving forward and we're just coming to the end of the whole process and time to clean up <clears throat> excuse me time to clean up and finish it off and uh, yeah hopefully you've enjoyed this i've enjoyed building it it's taken a long time to build it's taken even longer it seems to edit all the footage and knock it into something that hopefully you can enjoy and get something from but yeah uh, I'm looking forward to getting on with my next one and if you have liked this one then put your comments in the comment section below please it'll be so welcome if you're not a subscriber to my channel please subscribe there's going to be an awful lot more of this stuff in the future so um, by all means add your thoughts add your comments share become a subscriber most appreciated and I'll just leave you now with a few shots